you followed the latest YouTube pizza dough video and it still doesn't meet your standards. Now what? We're gonna go back to the guide and see how science and the artisanal experts from Italy can help us out. Let's make some pizza. I've made a lot of great pizza over the years in a variety of ovens, but to be honest, I've also made some pretty so-so pizza and I've had a couple of just abject disasters. Fortunately, I have higher standards than most of the people who eat my pizza and I don't serve them the disasters so they never noticed. We're gonna go back to the guide and see how we can trace unfavorable results to a mistake in our process. This is gonna take a few videos because there are a lot of different mistakes that you can make and a lot of unfavorable outcomes you can have. I've referenced this book a couple of times. It's called La Pizza Napolitana, Più di una notizia scientifica sul processo di lavorazione artigianale. Mine is in Italian, but you can pick this book up in English. And in my mind, this is really the definitive guide. Even though there are a lot of books on making pizza, and a lot of them could be really helpful and some are a little bit easier to read than others. This one gets down to brass tacks and you can really trace it back to the application of science and art together. And that's what I really love about this book. The last 50 pages or so are dedicated to tracing mistakes in your pizza back to problems with your process. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us your comments because it does affect the future videos that I make. I read what people say and we include it in what we're doing. Mistake number one really goes back to before you're making the pizza and after you've made the dough. They refer to it as flaccid and sticky dough. And this dough is really, really difficult to work with. This is a really common problem. If I look at the pizza forums and I look at some of the other videos, I can see some of this sticky dough out there. It's often just a mistake in the hydration of the dough. The other problem you can have is if your flour is not strong enough and is not absorbent enough, it's gonna feel sticky on the outside. And that's definitely not what you want. So make sure that you're regulating your hydration very carefully. I recommend somewhere between 55 and 65%. That kind of goes along with the guidelines from the association for uh, true Neapolitan pizza. Also, it could be just from a low strength flour. I use the Antimo Caputo Pizzeria flour. There are other types that people who do really long fermentation processes uh, are gonna need. In fact, if you're doing a long and or, and or a cold fermentation process, you're gonna need a dough that has a really good strength over the 300, 350 range. I don't find that's necessary. I don't make my pizza that way. Another thing that people forget is that Sometimes the dough just needs to rest. And it's not really just resting. After you've been kneading the dough for a while, it can be kind of sticky. When you put the dough aside, when it's kind of sticky, it's actually still working. It's forming those gluten chains. They continue to form if you've gone through the process of kneading in the water as you should. 15, 20 minutes later, you'll find that that stickiness has worked itself out. The next one is kind of the opposite, and this is when the dough is too hard. It may not even feel that dry, but it's certainly not going to be sticky when it's too hard. And when it's too hard, you can you know it because like if you put a weight on top of the dough or you try to press in the dough, it either presses back out. This is almost always due to too much flour in the dough. If you're using one kilo of water, you want to be somewhere between 1600 and 1800 grams of flour. That's the range that the association gives, and I believe gives the best results. Once you get experienced and you know how to work with the dough a little bit more, you can start varying the hydration, doing some of these long fermentation processes. My recommendation is that you learn to make a really good, straight on, basic dough, forget cold fermentation, use the direct method, perfect that technique, and then move on to the other techniques. Another one is the dough lacks structure. What do we mean by that? That's usually when the dough just simply doesn't hold together or maybe it rips apart and it's just not a very homogeneous mixture. This one's pretty easy. It's usually due 
to a lack of kneading. If you're working with a spiral mixer, it's recommended that you do 20 minutes of mixing. I do about the same amount of time by hand, although like I have a pretty aggressive technique. It's a good workout. Uh, you may need to work it a little bit longer if you're uh, not quite as aggressive on that, or you're a young guy and you're just really punching it out. Maybe uh, you don't need to spend as much time on it. But if it's done by hand, you can kind of feel uh, as you go. And I have a lot of other videos that kind of show you that your dough ball, your big dough ball, what it should look like. It should be pretty smooth on the outside. Once you get to that point, you're ready to go. Going to the opposite spectrum, your dough is too warm. Your dough can actually heat up in two ways. The more mechanical pressure that you put into the dough, the more uh, kneading that goes on, the more your dough heats up. It's actually gonna heat up during that process. It heats up a little bit differently if you use a mixer than if you do it by hand. The mechanical motion of the mixer, because it kind of keeps it in a tighter ball, actually heats up more than the mechanical pressure of your hands, but your hands are warmer. And so some of that warmth is going to transfer to the dough. This is often accompanied by the dough having a weak structure and can be caused by excessive kneading. So when your dough has a weak structure or is not very homogeneous, it's because you didn't knead it enough. If your dough is too warm, it can be because you've over kneaded the dough. The next two items have the same symptom, but they have different causes. And the symptom is that the dough patty has insufficient volume. Have you ever had one that, you know, when you're done proofing the dough, it just seemed a little too flat, or maybe um, it just never spread out while it was proofing? These, this can be caused in two different ways. So the first cause of this can be unstructured dough. A dough is considered unstructured when it lacks the gluten chains to hold it together. When the dough is held together, it actually grows and grows up. And that's exactly what you wanna see. This is generally caused by your dough being insufficiently proofed. Insufficient proofing doesn't mean you haven't given it enough time. There are other ways that dough can be insufficiently proofed. For example, if your water was too cold, then the yeast was never activated and it never caught up with the proofing process. The second could be something as simple as too much chlorine in the water. If you come from an area which chlorinates the water and it's not properly balanced by your municipality, that chlorine could actually kill off the yeast and keep the yeast from fermenting the dough. On the opposite side, uh, it could be that the yeast was killed off by the water being too warm. If you're over 105 degrees and you really shouldn't be near that, you should be in the 70-ish uh, degrees Fahrenheit range when you're making your dough. So uh, that will kill the yeast and can kill off some of the yeast as well. Another one is that the yeast is expired. If I haven't been making pizza for a while and I have some yeast that I've had around uh, for a while, or I know that it sat out of the refrigerator for too long, I'll take a little bit of that yeast, put it in some water and add some sugar to it. I don't like to add sugar to my yeast when I'm making the dough, but it does allow me to check and make sure if that yeast has been, is properly activating. And if I get that little bloom of uh, yeast in the water, then I know that my yeast is good. But expired yeast is a really common cause of this problem. And the last thing can simply be a weak flour. The weaker your flour is, the less structure the dough is going to have, and it just isn't gonna rise, and it's not gonna form those air pockets, and so it's gonna have a very low volume. On the opposite side of the spectrum, your dough could be overstructured, and this will also cause the dough patty to be too small in volume. So let's break that one down. This is from the dough overproofing, and it can be that you let it proof for too long, the dough rose, and then it collapsed back on itself. One of the main symptoms of the overstructuring is that the dough is hard to work with, and hard to work with in a way that you may not think about. It's difficult to stretch the dough because it just kind of pulls apart and you get a lot of holes in it. This is often from overstructured dough or collapsed dough.
One of the causes of this can simply be, it's just proof for too long. You let it grow, it grew up and, it, and it, you let it grow, it grew up and it came back down. Another cause of this can go back to the water like we talked about before. If you have too much calcium in your water, so if you have hard water, it's usually from calcium, that calcium in the water can actually cause your dough to overproof. I hope this video was useful for you today. I had a great time making it. I'm gonna talk about the reason I took some time off over what were holidays for us here in the US, Thanksgiving, was reevaluating this YouTube channel. I've made a lot of different videos and I really enjoy sharing it and I learn a lot as I make the videos. So it's definitely worth it for me, but I also want it to be worth it for you. And that's why I really need your comments. Please let me know what you want to hear about Call me out on things when I'm wrong. I promise like, I'll include that in future videos. I really want to find out what can be most useful to you in making these videos. Because making pizza, to me, is really important, and I'm sure it is to you, and that's why I do this. Thanks again. Please subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. It really means a lot to me to get that kind of attention so that I know I'm doing something that's of value. Thanks very much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.